Hi guys and welcome to Coffee Corner. We're so glad to have you guys back on this beautiful bright Wednesday morning, middle of the week, it's hump day, and we're almost through a full another week of October. It's crazy. I know I say this a lot, but it is crazy with how fast time goes and honestly it has just been a whirlwind of activity we were able to do some stuff with our church um have some young adults and teens over this weekend so that was a lot of fun and it, it, it was really good time of fellowship and just you know really just hanging out not necessarily anything you know uh plan like it was planned and we planned through some stuff but you know it was just good to just hang out get to know each other a little bit better and just to make some some good friendships some good connections with people honestly that's been one of the things our church has been sort of focusing on is not just you know spending time in church but spending time with the believers and getting to know each other in a more personal way and not just um sitting in a church pew and I really appreciated that and I think it's helped our church um, become stronger and just get to know each other as individuals and fellow brothers and sisters in Christ so that was my weekend and it made it go really fast you know planning for it Saturday having it Sunday and you know sort of not necessarily recovering because it wasn't bad I don't want to say recovering but I'm an introvert so it's like sort of recovering on Monday um, for me because I like my social battery goes in completely full and then just drains when I spend extended amount of times with you know multiple people so that was again it was it was great I really enjoyed it so I hope that your weekend was fantastic whatever you guys did whether it was just relaxing or maybe hanging out with people working around the house whatever it was I hope you guys had a great great weekend and we're glad to have you guys back on Coffee Corner. So we're going to just dive right into Bible because to be quite honest with you, I am, don't have coffee right now because I've already had two cups today and we're out of creamer. So I just, I can't, I can't drink another cup of black coffee. So that, that's where we stand today. Actually, this devotional thought sort of spawned from the last thing we talked about with Joseph and God sort of ha and God having that overarching plan that we don't always see. So um, my thought today actually comes from Habakkuk, the entire book of Habakkuk. This is sort of like a general survey of the book. Um, I know Habakkuk's not necessarily a very well-read book because it is one of those minor prophets. We can't, nor but you know, you can't really find it it's sandwiched between. Nahum and Zephaniah, so two other books that we don't often go to. I really do think the Minor Prophets are overlooked, and I think there's a lot of good lessons that we can learn from the Minor Prophets. I was actually able to take two classes um, that, you know, sort of looked over pr the prophetic books, some more in the Major Prophets, um, others on just on the the minor prophets and it was really good and I learned a lot so I just wanted to share some thoughts from you with you from one of these minor prophets so Habakkuk to give you like a brief overview of the book is basically Habakkuk is crying to God ask and he sees all this wickedness that's happening in Israel and he's like are you going to he's basically asking God to fix it you know fix all this wickedness fix all this violence that you know I see and God then responds to Habakkuk and he says okay this is what I'm going to do I'm going to raise up the Chaldeans so the Chaldeans and the Babylonians are going to come and they're going to conquer Israel and they're going to take care of that wickedness and perverseness that's happening in the nation and then Habakkuk sort of comes back to God and he's like wait why would you use these people? These people are super wicked. How? That's not what I. That's not what I was asking God. I just want you to fix the problem, like, but not use wicked people to fix the problem. And so they sort of go back, and the three chapters of Habakkuk. Again, it's a shorter book. Is basically this conversation between God and Habakkuk, and Habakkuk coming to God's point of view of God can use 
you know, people that are far less than perfect. The Babylonians definitely were not a godly people. But he can use someone and use those leaders and use those powers to accomplish his purpose and his plan. And that's not a, that's not what Habakkuk was thinking or wanted when he originally went and said, God, fix this for us. But God had a big plan and God uses people and things. And he and I think it's in Psalms where it says God guides the heart of a king like a river something like that. I know that's not exactly what it is. I didn't get a chance to look it up before I recorded, but basically God directs the ways of the kings. And even though those, the ones that don't acknowledge him, I always think of, um, oh, the one that they talk about in Isaiah that comes through Israel and doesn't destroy Israel. Name is slipping my mind at the moment. If you know what it is, put it in the comments below. I will look it up later. I'll try to put it in the comments below. Um, I want to say Alexander, but I don't. It's not Alexander. It's a Greek, I think. Nope, I don't remember. Okay, moving on. So, but needless to say, throughout Israel's history, God uses nations that are not godly people. They're not God's necessarily chosen people and raise up to chastise Israel and to fix those problems of spiritual corruption in Israel by bringing them back to God. And there is a lot of history in Habakkuk, and I understand that sometimes you can get lost in that, but being able to see the whole picture of Habakkuk crying out for God to fix a problem, then God coming back and telling him how he's going to fix a problem, Habakkuk, you're like, well, no, that's not how I want you to fix it. Fix it my way. Fix it this way. And God's like, no, 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 no. We're going to fix it my way because it's the best way. And then I love how Habakkuk ends this because he doesn't, he, he ends it with praise to God, but he's not ending it in a way where he's like, oh, well, everything is going to be all happy and wonderful. Um, I'm going to read the last three verses. So it's Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. He says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall cut off from the fold, shall be cut off from the fold, and there should be no herd in the stalls. Yet will I fix, yet will I rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, he will make my feet like hind's feet, he will make me to walk upon mine hind places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. And I think that often we, like Habakkuk, you know, we pray for God to fix our problems. And he doesn't fix them necessarily maybe the way that we want them fixed or the way that we think would be best. Or we pray and, and we assume that God's going to fix everything and everything's going to be great and wonderful and all, you know, all rosy and peachy. But at the end of Habakkuk, you know, he's saying, you know, this is not going to be great. It's, you know, not these things are going to fail. These things are going to fade. But he said, but it begins with although, although everything around me is like falling apart, I'll rejoice in the Lord and I will joy in the God of my salvation. Because through all the turmoil, through all the bad stuff, that's happening God is still his salvation and he knows that it's his it's his salvation and he's not really and I think there is a spiritual aspect of salvation but I think it's also talking about the physical aspect of Israel's salvation um you know even though all these bad things are happening you know the ultimate is the ultimate end of this is Israel's salvation, even though they have to go through all this turmoil and through all this stuff that isn't necessarily good. And they're going through, they're going to be in captivity in Babylon. And I just, I find this very, very relatable because I'm often like Habakkuk. I think I know exactly what, like, I know what I want the result of my prayer to be like. Okay, God, you know, this person isn't feeling well. This is the result I want. 
or you know I'm having this issue in my life I'm having this frustration or these people Lord are just you know and I have you know I just I want you to change these people I want you to change the people you know and so often you know God doesn't work in our ways and our times but it is you know when Israel comes back from captivity one of the things that they don't ever struggle with again is idolatry like captivity fixed that for them they never they didn't they didn't fall back into you know worshiping Baal or Moloch um so it wasn't maybe it wasn't the easiest way it wasn't you know the gentle preferred you know just get rid of these these certain hypocrites um but it it it, it did accomplish in the end it did accomplish what Habakkuk wanted it purged Israel of this wickedness of this idolatry and you know so often we get we think that God's not fixing it when the fix doesn't go our way you know we want our country to at least I, I want my country to be fixed I want it to be you know come back to God do you go back to those you know traditional Christian roots um, and you know I just want God to sort of snap his finger in for it to happen like idealistically and that's not exactly what I say like that's not what I say when I pray for our country but you know in my mind that's sort of what I want to do I just wanted to you know get rid of certain people you know have these agendas you know disappear or whatever things that I don't like and you know I, that's not normally the way that God works you know he works through people he works through circumstances and he works through people that like these Babylonians did not love the Lord and that may be the way that he's going to take you know our country through or maybe a personal thing where it, it just takes a breaking of a nation or a person or whatever the situation is for the problem to be fixed you know whatever that situation is for those results to come about that we're praying for and it's really easy to get frustrated and to get impatient when God's fix doesn't seem to be going right when it seems to fail you know to our short sightedness but to know that you know we can't talk to God in the same way Habakkuk you know we don't have this conversation this vocal conversation with God but I think Habakkuk is a very good example and a very good reminder that you know God's ways aren't our ways and he is working even when we can't see it even when things seem to be in turmoil and we can say although this 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 is happening or my life seems to be falling apart right now yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will joy in the God of my salvation the Lord is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet he will make me to walk upon my high places and we can have that victorious mindset even when the world around us is crumbling so just a thought um, I would encourage you go ahead read through Habakkuk you know maybe get a if you feel like you need some help and you feel like you don't understand get a good commentary um, Ryrie has some really good commentaries um, Fein, Feinberg Feinberg is the one I used in school he has a book from called the minor prophets which is also a very good um, study it's a little bit hard to follow sometimes in the commentary but he is a, a um, a Christian Jew writer and he, he just has some really good insights so if you want um, a commentary on Minor Prophets I would highly recommend that one it's really good but um yeah go ahead maybe dig into that dig into you know some other um, Minor Prophet they're really good I might might start looking at Minor Prophets a little more in these because I think they're really good and I think they're overlooked but um, I've already gone over time with this video, so we will see you next time. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that or ring the bell so you can get my notifications of when I post. So I will talk to you on Friday. See you later, guys. Bye.